What it do, YouTube? Paul the Fifth here. Welcome to my channel, Legacy Studios Nash. I am your favorite Indian guy living right here in Nashville, Tennessee. I hope that this video finds you healthy and well. If you've been with me for some time, you may be asking yourself, hey, Paul the Fifth, where have you been? Well, if you've been with me for some time, you may know that I had to have surgery on the back of my head. I had a three and a half inch cyst, got that removed, and post surgery, I had some complications. So I've been dealing with that and here I am healthy and well making this video for you. First thing that I got to say is I don't recommend that you drop your SD cards or your hard drives on any surface, but I just did that for the sake of this video. Before I get started today, I have a question for you. Are you a content creator? Do you like taking pictures and video? Are you a music producer? Are you wanting to become a mix engineer? Do you have things on your laptop, but your internal storage is just running out of space? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then this video just might be for you. Today's topic is external hard drives. I'm breaking this content into five different sections for you. It's going to be fun. And I hope by the end of the video, you learn a lot. It's all coming up right after the show reel. Yo, my name is Paul the Fear. What's good, everybody? My name is Paul the Fifth, Fifth, and I run Legacy Studios Nash. Today's video is all about what's behind me on my workstation. External hard drives. I'm breaking this video down into five different sections today. Section number one, what is an external hard drive and why do you need it? Section number two, different types of hard drives that are out on the market today. There are a plethora of different types of hard drives, anywhere from thumb drives, SD cards, a desktop drive like this eight terabyte Seagate drive. There's so many out there. I want to make it simple for you. Section number three, we'll be talking about uses for your external hard drive. In section number four, this is where it's going to get interesting. I'm going to show you how to format a hard drive. Now, if you've been with me for some time, you know that I run strictly all Macs. I'm going to get one of my newer hard drives and format it for my M1 Mac Mini. And in section number five, I'll be giving you some different recommendations for different types of hard drives that just might suit your situation. If you're ready, let's get into it. Section number one. What is an external hard drive and why do you need it? I'm going to go ahead and tell you what an external hard drive is. And then after that, it's story time on your computer, whether it be a PC or a Mac desktop or a laptop, you're going to have an internal hard drive. Now this internal hard drive is capable of holding many things. It could be your OS or operating system documentation. If you're a student, maybe you've got a word document or a pages document. Maybe you're putting together a research paper. You can hold all that on there. If you're a music producer or you do Final Cut Pro, you can put things like that on there. It basically stores all the things that you want stored on it. Now, if you run a newer Mac, like an M1 MacBook Pro, Mac Mini like I have, or an M1 Max or an M1 Max Pro, during the initial customization of the purchase, you can set up how much internal storage that you want you can't add any extra storage at a later time. Now, if you run a PC or an older generation Mac down the road, you're able to add more storage. But if you're not able to do that, this is where an external hard drive comes in. Like for me running all the videos that I make, I put my Final Cut Pro projects on there because they can be lengthy and the cache can wipe out your internal storage rather quickly. I put all my sessions, my logic sessions, my Pro Tools sessions on there, any documentation that needs to go with that, I've got them on my external hard drive. I keep things organized as well. 
So that's pretty much what your internal versus your external hard drive is. Now here's a story as far as why you need one. Come on in a little closer. It is story time with Paul the fifth. fifth. So earlier in the year, I had a hard drive like this. This is a five terabyte external hard drive. I had everything I did from 2021 on here and I was moving everything from this drive to another one. And all of a sudden I started to hear it tick like a clock. Then it stopped ticking. So I unplugged it and I thought, what the heck? The next day I plugged it in, used a different data cable. I plugged it into my Mac mini, my MacBook Pro, nothing. So I called the manufacturer. Thankfully, it was under a one year warranty and it had a data recovery service with it. This is the brand new hard drive under warranty. And this is the replacement that has all my files from 2021 on it. So when I come to section number five and talk about recommendations, I want to make sure that you have something that's got plenty of storage that comes with or you can pay for an extended warranty that will cover a data recovery service. Don't lose your data. Section number two. There are so many different types of hard drives out on the market. I want to make this a simple process for you. Let's go ahead and look at one over here that's about yay big. This is it right here. This is a 32 gig SD or sand disk memory card. Can you believe you can put 32 gigs worth of information on there? Well, you can, but how do you get off of here? What you would do is get an adapter like this. You take your chip, put it in like that. On the back, there's this reader. You pop it into your computer and it reads your files. Something like this, I probably wouldn't put something massive on there. If you're a photographer, maybe some pictures, some smaller documents, things like that. I probably wouldn't put heavy files. I'll talk a little bit more about things like that in section five in our recommendations. Let's take a look at another drive. This here is another sand disk drive. This one only had like 183 megs. It's like super, super old, but it's a thumb drive because it's approximately the size of your thumb. Now this has a USB on it and you just do the same thing as the other one. You plug it into your computer, it reads your files and you can move things from one computer to another. Cool story. This is an external hard drive too. It's a thumb drive and it's also a 32 gig drive. Now I had a Pro Tools session on here called Sundays. It's a project that I'm working on with my boy Big Tez out of Memphis. And I put the session on here, drove up to Goodlettsville and went to my friend Corey Studio, Claw Sound Studios, and he recorded electric guitar on the song. I brought it back here and mixed it all. You'll hear it soon. Oh, and studio tour coming up of Claw Sound Studios really soon. Just a plug, but this can hold Pro Tools sessions. It worked flawlessly. Now let's take a look at a couple other types of hard drives. This one here, this is a Western Digital. Now this one is approximately five to seven years old and it is no longer working. It's in the cemetery of external extinguished hard drives. Thankfully, I was able to get all my data off of it into another one. Here is a newer version of an external hard drive. This is another Western Digital. Now this one is compatible with PC and Mac. This one has five terabytes of storage. It's got a data cable in there and it will allow you to pull all your files from here to your computer and vice versa. As long as you've got that much data on your internal storage. Let's take a look at another one. This is the warranty replacement hard drive. It's also five terabytes. And this is the hard drive that I got that has all my data on it. Now this one is an eight terabyte hard drive and I keep it here plugged into my computer. It's right here. And beyond that right here is a four terabyte G drive. That one I keep here as well. I generally start off with files on this one. Then I move it to the eight terabyte drive. Here's another one that I want to show you. Now this one here is very unique. This is a Samsung. It's a SATA drive. It's two and a half inches and it's an SSD solid state drive. Now this one is two terabytes. What's the difference between this SSD and these HDDs? Well, let me take a minute to show you what I'm talking about. 
What is an HDD? An HDD is a data storage device that lives inside the computer. It has spinning disks inside where data is stored magnetically. The HDD has an arm with several heads or transducers to read and write data on the disk. It is similar to how a turntable record player works with an LP record hard disk and a needle on an arm transducer. Now what is an SSD? Solid state, because they use solid state devices under the hood. In an SSD, all data is stored in an integrated circuit. This difference from HDDs has a lot of implications, especially in size and performance. Without the need for a spinning disk, SSDs can reduce to the shape and size of a stick of gum, or even as small as a postage stamp. Their capacity or how much data they can hold varies, making them flexible for smaller devices such as slim laptops, convertibles, or two-in-ones. And SSDs dramatically reduce access time since users don't have to wait for platter rotation to start up. SSDs are more expensive than HDDs per amount of storage in gigabytes and terabytes, but the gap is closing as SSD prices decline at a faster pace than HDDs prices year over year. Before we move on to step number three, I want to talk about some of the similarities and differences between SSDs and HDDs. Now, both types of external hard drives are going to allow you to store things. Both types of devices are going to allow you to rename the device itself. And both types of devices need to be ejected properly before removing. And if you run a Mac, all you have to do is hit the little eject button. Now, here are some differences. Some of these drives may come in different shapes and sizes, as we've already seen. They may come in different storage amounts, maybe a few hundred megs to a few terabytes. And again, that's all up to you, whatever your budget is and how much you actually need. Some drives may be smoother and may move data faster than others. Some may be more portable. I take some, I throw them in my tech backpack. Some I keep here, such as this one here, I call it my Legacy Studio HD Static. Some are made strictly for PC, some may be made strictly for Mac. Make sure to check on the packaging when you make a purchase. And of course, you get what you pay for. You're gonna have some over here on the very low end, you're gonna have some medium grade, and of course, you're gonna have some great quality ones. In section number five, I'll give you some recommendations. Here we are in section number three. Uses for your external hard drive. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I do put a lot of my Final Cut Pro projects on the external drive. I do all my Logic and Pro Tool sessions. I put them all on here as well. A lot of the pictures and videos that I take to edit, I put on here. If there's any documentation that needs to go with my DAW sessions, I'll put that on here. If there's any documentation that needs to go with my Final Cut Pro, sometimes I'll use music from a service I have called Soundstripe. If there is a YouTube or social media code, I'll copy and paste that on there as well. You can basically put anything that you want on your external hard drive. A lot of times I put plugins for my DAWs on here. I put plugins for Final Cut Pro on here. Basically anything that I don't want taking up space on my internal hard drive, slowing it down, I put on here. So there's a few uses for you. It is time to format our hard drive. Here is the Seagate portable drive. I'll go right over here to my launch pad, and then we'll go over here to disk utility, and then we'll click on the hard drive, and we'll want to go to erase. And then right here is the name of the drive. We'll change this to APFS and erase. Now it's unmounting. Once it's done with that, all you have to do is plug it back in and it is formatted. Let's see how long this might take here. All right, we are done. Now we are ready to use our new drive. Here we are wrapping things up with section number five. This is the part of the video where I wanna give you different recommendations on possible external XD cards that might work in your situation. Now, please keep in mind that this is going to be very general because everybody's situation is so extremely different. Let's start with the basics and work our way up. Here's a quick story from when I was a student at SAE. I had an instructor named Sir Alan Shacklock, and he would always tell us, your information is not securely stored unless it's on three different drives. So just keep that in mind. These days, one or two may not always be the safest. 
So let's say you are someone that uses a non iPhone. You're on the other side. Just kidding. But let's say you have an Android or you've got a digital camera and you're taking pictures and video off of that and you want to put it onto your computer. For something smaller like that, my recommendation would definitely be the SD card and then the SD card reader. That will definitely allow you to get those pictures and videos from your phone and camera to your computer, no problem. Option number two, let's say you're doing some more picture taking, more video, some bigger files, some heavier lifting, if you will. Something like this might be a better option. This is the thumb drive. Now this one's only 32 gig, but anytime you are getting ready to do a project, keep in mind a few things. How many pictures am I gonna use on here? How many videos? Am I gonna be shooting in HD, 4K, ProRes? Before you do a project, take some time and look up what those file sizes, how small or how big they are. Recommendation number three. If you're doing projects like maybe Final Cut Pro or Pro Tools, Logic, any DAW out on the market, I would suggest definitely getting yourself an external HD like this one. Yes, this is the five terabyte drive. This is the two terabyte. This is the Western Digital Mod Passport. This is the Seagate drive. That is an extremely large amount of data. Also, don't discount over the air services. You've got things like Dropbox, you've got iCloud for iPhones, you've got Google Drive, and then check out Backblaze. For me, two computers is roughly $140 a year, 70 bucks a computer. Check it out, link is in the description. And like I said earlier, there are so many different types of drives, storage types, features, benefits, things like that. Earlier, I also mentioned that I have a Seagate drive. That would be my personal recommendation to you because the drive came with a two year warranty and also came with the most beneficial part to me, a one year data recovery service. I do have to tell you that this is not sponsored by Seagate. This is just my personal experience with this company. They have a 90% data recovery feature service. That is hella amazing in today's marketplace. No matter what external drive you get, please make sure that you are able to save your projects your music, your video files, accurately, correctly, and safely. Another tip, don't forget, when finished using your external hard drive, make sure to hit that eject button so it is ejected smoothly, properly, and correctly so you do not corrupt any files. All right, ladies and gents, thank you so, so much for watching today. I truly appreciate it. This has been External Hard Drives, everything you need to know. Hopefully I was able to cover everything that you are looking for. If you have any questions, definitely leave me a comment below. Hit me up at LegacyStudiosNash at gmail.com. And again, I truly appreciate you. Let's grow this thing together. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Thumbs up if you found this useful. All right, guys. My name is Paul the Fifth. Fifth. I will catch you in the next one. All right, I'm out.